Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Jed. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, obviously you have Jed performing the job, the next job on the list that she has for uh, uh, Bessick. The whole stealing that particular car situation. And it's actually interesting. I do appreciate that this show does a good job of, like, deep diving into the the um, criminal works. Well, for one, we actually kind of get like a flashback to 10 years ago. It's Rufus, um, a dude named McKay, and um, Jed working a job. And it seems like it's them stealing some diamonds or something for Charlie. I even love Charlie's like, hey, I'm trying to make small talk here. But it turns out they got cut short. They were supposed to be getting like 25% of a cut. They were only getting 10%. And the dude in particular setting the standards and stuff like that apparently kind of made a very offhand joke or whatever to Jet. Charlie pops a trunk and it's like, were you skimming the money off from them? Dude's like kind of admitting to it and then it's like, did you say something inappropriate to uh, Jet? And he's like, it was just a joke and he's taking a tire iron like he's about to hit him. It's like, alright Jet, here. It's like, you bash his teeth in for what he said. And like Rufus is like, you know that's not our style. Come on, Charlie. Charlie's like, fine. Pulls out his gun without hesitation. Pow, pow. Close the trunk. It's like, all right, man, the next job. Mm. So that was interesting. Like, it seems like later on McKay, like obviously present day was kind of like, yeah, we shouldn't have taken that next job. I guess that next job is either what got him busted is what got Rufus busted. Well, it was 10 years ago, so it could. Well, no. It most likely was the one that got either him or Rufus busted. So most likely, so. Um, either way, uh, being back in present day, McKay, you know, kind of like, obviously, like I said, just the whole thing of outlining, like, okay, like following these steps, looking to these certain things, trying to catch patterns between like, whether it be, you know, gardeners who are going in and out the patterns of the, the couple that you're breaking into their house, as well as, you know, uh, higher security like what their schedule's like so they're actually doing a very good job of that and then lo and behold it's like who's there oh it's nolan apparently uh barry's there with uh you know we later on find out it's vicky and i love you know it's like okay they're sneaking around doing their thing it's kind of interesting i was like oh so you're doing this now it's like no the entire thing was meant to be a dry run i guess because like they had already set other things in motion to be like oh give like giving them like tickets to like the opera like a like a, a showing or whatever like opera thing or whatever um that was an opera it was like a play or something like that i think regardless so it's a situation of all right so Jet takes it upon herself to go talk to him. I love Vicky's kind of ignoring her, but she's like, okay, tell him Mrs. Evans is here to see him or I'm going to go back there myself. And I love Barry comes out. He sees it. Jet, he's like, shit. And he's like, oh, I don't think it's right for you to come here. It's like, dude, the only reason why I'm here, because I saw you in your car pulling up at this spot we're robbing. He's like, uh, are, what? He's like, I... You know, are you following me? It's like, no. But the fact of the matter is, we're being smart about this. Because she got pissed because it's like, he's an amateur. Like, you're literally driving up to the front gate of the place that's potentially about to get robbed. The whole point is to make it look inconspicuous. You're not supposed to draw too much attention. Because you make something like that happen. Some security cameras catch you. And it's like, oh, some shit goes missing. It's like, oh, why were you literally parked out front checking out someone's place? So there's that. You know, it's like, okay, Vicky's listening in. Bring her in. And it's like, okay, so if he hasn't told you everything, it's a criminal enterprise he's partaking in. We're robbing some, something. Has he told anyone else? It's like, no. The fact of the matter is, can you keep him away from the place for a couple of days? She's like, sure. So that thought that might be the end of it. No, nope. turns out Vicky obviously kind of working with her boyfriend. It's like, oh yeah, Nolan's whole thing actually turned out to be true. They're going to rob the place. I guess the whole thing was like, while they end up doing their thing, either we're going to rob them robbing the place or we're just going to rob the place when they're done with it. Uh, either way, uh, if his real name is Henry, Henry fucked up big time because Henry ended up falling asleep when he was kind of supposed to be kind of staking out the place because he's supposed to be watching when they do their job so that he can jump in, you know, like hijack the robbery himself. But he got caught by the security, which is going to screw him over in some shape or form because the security wrote down his name and stuff like that. So... Uh, he thinks he's all smooth sailing. Obviously, they go in there to get the card. They do their thing. So it's like, oh, no one should notice. But then, lo and behold, Jet sees the lights on. It's like, what's going on here? Home dude. 
he ha I don't know. I guess he has something to prove. I guess for him, it's like, oh, look at me. I have smarted you. I could have killed all three of you. But I was like, why kill all three of you and drive the truck away when I can just get the location of where it's going to get dropped off and then steal the car? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh, uh, this is your base of operations? You're smart. That's that's an idea. I mean, you we're the same. So that means I'm smart. It's like he's so trying to prove himself. Once again, the beauty that is Jet, just uh, in every occasion, just being super calm under pressure, got a gun against her, and she's just like... You never let them, never let them see you sweat because I guess under circumstances like this, it's like you losing your cool, panicking. It's just gonna make someone with an itchy trigger finger a little more itchy, and it's just kind of like better not. Just kind of keep everything cool, calm, and collected. And so he's even going like, "Yeah, uh, I'm buttoning your shirt." It's like why? Because I want to see you topless. It's like so you went from robbing her to want to see her topless. Glad to see where you're. You know that you're so focused on this whole thing. It's just kind of like, oh, you're such an asshole. Um, so now it's a situation of like, he's like, oh, okay, so tell me the location. Is like, is that the real location? I can't be for sure if that's the real location. You're just going to have to keep me alive as insurance policy for my partners and everything. And he knocks her out. That's the last we see of Jet in this particular episode in that regard. So that was fascinating. I just want to circle back to it. That was kind of a cute thing, uh, the discussion with Alice. Once again, it's just like, the moments Jet has of being a mom, because she hasn't had, I guess, like, once again, we don't know the full scope of everything, so we don't know what her motherhood situation has been like, you know, while she was in jail, and when, after, after she had Alice, like, we don't know what that situation necessarily, I would assume just to not draw more attention than necessary, she probably didn't have any contact, probably could contact it with Maria, and got that to Alice, but probably never, like, directly, like, oh, let me listen to her, let me talk to her type of situation, regardless, so it's just interesting. It's like, oh, what's gossip and having to explain gossip to her? And it's like, why do they have a different word? Because gossip is basically, oh, it's like lying about someone, right? So what's, why do they have two separate words? When you actually break stuff down like that, you're like, that's actually kind of some like deep, I guess philosophical questions. Maybe you just think they're shower thoughts, or maybe they're just like thoughts you have when you're high. But it's just kind of something you're like, hmm, gossip is basically kind of lying behind someone's back. But, you know, it's a more descriptive version of lying, but it just basically means the same thing as lying to a certain extent. I mean, to be fair, there's uh, there's a gray area to, like, gossip and stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily, I don't think gossip necessarily even has to be a lie. It's just, like, as long as you're talking about somebody behind their back is kind of the general thing. But nevertheless, it was just kind of an interesting conversation itself. There was also other interesting conversations, too, between, like, Phoenix and Maria. Maria's kind of asking, like, oh, is, you know, Phoenix a junkie? She's kind of like, I'm a new person, so you don't have to worry about me around um, Alice. They actually had, they compared notes uh, to family situations. Like, Maria's dad was a bit of a drug dealer. At one point in time, like, had her and a sibling, like, uh, wear condoms filled with drugs on their waist. Um... He was kind of a violent person. It'd be like on average, like once a week. It was enough to make her never kind of their mother never really stand up because she, you know, too ter like petrified. It was enough to petrify her with fear. So, and then Phoenix talks about her stepfather situation, her brother's dad, and that situation. It's actually kind of interesting because, like, he was like, she was like, yeah, he hit, he definitely, her brother got it a lot worse than she did because he always took it softer on her. But she was like, not like that. I mean, when I was 14, he did something. He was gotten gropey, but she was like, yo, if you do it again, I'm going to kill you. And it's like, did you mean that? And it's like, well, yeah, like, I'd never even had sex before then. Uh, but she was like, besides the point, uh, turns out later on, he ends up stealing all of her mom's money and bounce. So emptied out her accounts. Her mom never had the best luck with women. So it's just, it's a complicated, like, both of them come from a very complicated background. I guess that was just kind of like, then, it's more so a situation of saying, like, I think, well, it's bonding over having kind of shitty family, but I think it's also more so the situation of, like, saying that, you know, we both come from these very fucked backgrounds. You take care and look after Alice, and I'm in a kind of a similar situation, but you don't have to worry, I'm not going to bring my bullshit around Alice, essentially, so, what was interesting, though, she was kind of stalking around the place, maybe that's why uh, Maria brought that up, just because for whatever reason, like, Phoenix was looking around, I guess she's trying to find out more about Jet, because she feels, probably doesn't really know that much about her, and she found a whole bunch of photos of Evan, so I'm kind of getting a feeling like, oh, that's going to come back and bite her in some shape or form, we'll see in the long run. I'd also forgotten a big detail that was so interesting, too. 
Jet happened to be good after she was leaving the house like earlier in the day. She happens to look. The couple are friends with Charlie, so it's like okay, we're starting to see a pattern here. Literally every job that he's given her. This is only the second job. They're supposed to be well. It's the first job of the next, the last three jobs she's supposed to do. But obviously this is the second, which will be in a grand total of four jobs. Uh, this one was the second one to include someone that had a connection to Charlie. The gold bars last the last job were connected to someone that knew Charlie. So, I mean, to be fair, the whole Bessick and Charlie thing is a back and forth thing. So it is, does seem like, it, but that's the thing. I guess going after people around him is kind of chipping away at Charlie's armor or something like that. Is that Bessick's idea? Is that Junior's idea? I don't know. I feel like Junior would be more so all about an upfront attack. Maybe, like I said, maybe it's supposed to be kind of chipping around the edges of the connections that Charlie has. I guess it's supposed to be like, oh, you don't, you think you're untouchable, you're top doll. Well, we're getting these people around you that, you know, meaning that we're closing in. Probably like as we get closer to the final job, the, the you know, fourth job. Which, I, I say it like that, because in the grand scheme of things, the fourth job, but actually the third job. I know I'm confusing the whole situation by going about it that way. Nevertheless, the final job is most likely going to be about hitting Charlie. Hell, for all we know, it might even be about stealing back the ring just to be a final middle finger about this whole thing. We'll see in the long run, but I just thought that was kind of an interesting detail. It's like, yeah, we're starting, it, does, it seems like too much of a coincidence. It's, it's definitely starting to... See a, we're starting to see a pattern. Next job, we'll probably see it again. Of like, oh, these people have connections to Charlie, so we'll see. So there was that. The other side of things dealt with Josie. Um, Josie actually goes and sees Bobby, and it's like, oh yeah, like uh, Junior, he's so paranoid. He actually thinks you're a cop. She's like, actually, I'm a cop. I'm like, oh, don't do this, Josie. I was like, it's Charlie. He's watching. Junior's watching nearby. It's like, no, one of his guys, the dude, the, the actor who plays uh, Rio, uh, Rio number four from, um, or just four from um, Dark Matter. He's watching, so I'm like, oh, that's not good for you, Josie. Then, like, they show up later on to get Bobby. I'm like, oh, that's not good. Then Bobby, well, then Josie and Jackie are having their complicated relationship because Jackie hasn't really talked to her in, like, two days because she's avoiding him. He shows up drunk at her place. Apparently, she's got someone over Bill. As a, well, it's not actually Bill. His name is Phil, and he just didn't want to correct her in front of him. It's like, oh, that's her ex and everything. Um, I even love him being like, oh, who is it? Is it somebody I know? And he's looking, and then, like, Jackie's staring at Phil, and it's like, oh, that's not someone I know. Would it have made it better if it was someone you knew? But I guess it's, I guess he expected it to be someone he knew. So, there's that whole con complicated, you know, situation. It's like, that's a hot mess all on its own. And then, you know, we have, holy crap, Junior's people burst into Josie's place. And poor Phil dead Josie uh, in a position where they're dragging her taking her to see Junior and Junior's got a twisted game of hanged man you guess the right letters you get you get the you get the word you get to leave granted you won't be in the best condition but every r letter you get wrong you lose body parts Josie started guessing some stuff right she even kind of figures like wait he started talking about Bobby in certain regards in the past tense especially when he got frustrated with like don't you bring up Bobby it's like you kill Bobby. Bobby literally didn't say anything to to Josie, which is mean, so basically meaning Josie kind of got him killed. Jackie literally said, "Do not do what she did," but she did it anyway. Her pushing it just because she made a point that like you know her and Jos uh, um, Jackie weren't seeing eye to eye, so I think that led to her kind of making more brash decisions. To be fair, she wanted to save Bobby, but you can make the argument she, in fact, probably got him killed faster because of that. Because, once again, the conversation, she even brought it up last episode, it's like, oh, I want to help Bobby because you literally said it yourself that, uh... Junior is crazy, and turns out he is bona fide crazy, especially the way he goes about things. It's like, oh, he straight up cuts off, uh... Josie's right arm. That entire scene, especially with like the red coloring to like everything, it's like that looked like something out straight out of a horror scene, kind of like a horror thriller or something. Like you're running away from a killer or killers. Um, I guess it's just straight up horror movie running or straight up thriller. It just it just felt like it. It felt like something you see in a movie. It wouldn't just, dude. It was just. 
a sucky situation. And it's like, hey, like, you know, Josie might get the upper hand. It's like, yo, she fighting back. She ain't going down without a fight. The blood trips. I'm like, oh, no, they're shooting at her. It's like, okay, get away, get away, get away. And lo and behold, who's there? Freaking Jackie with the chainsaw. It's like, Jesus. Because it already he already made it clear that he did the exact same thing to Bobby. It's like, that sucks. Even talking about the fact is he cut off Bobby's balls and he's going to, like, use them for, like, food or something. It's just like, oh, Jesus. Once again, showing you just how freaking crazy he is. To the point you're willing to kill a cop. I don't even know if Charlie would go that far. But the fact of the matter is Junior's pissed because it's like, oh, you 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 messed up my setup because like Bobby was my thing. It, once again, it wasn't even really love. It was just like that that was kinda of almost like that was my Ken doll that you took. Because I think legitimately that's all Bobby was to him was a Ken doll that's like, oh, I'll pull you out and play with you. Other than that, once again, it's like, oh, you don't quit your job. You be in shape. You be there for me when I need you to be. That He was legitimately just uh, Charlie uh, Jr.'s, you know, Ken doll. So it's like, I don't expect things to end well for Josie. That ending makes me think like, yeah... She's dead. It don't, like I said, it kind of fits like a horror movie of like, oh yeah, and it cuts to black at the end because the killer ended up winning. It's that type of thing. Uh, like I said, it's just, it's sad that, you know, maybe different circumstances could have saved her in the end. Maybe it's like, if her and Jackie were in good terms, maybe she wouldn't have pushed the whole Bobby situation as much. At the very least, if they were in good terms, Jackie would have been there. I, I think they purposely waited for Jackie to leave because they literally came back to... Uh, came to her place right after Jackie left to the point she thought the one coming in was Jackie. So, actually, very kind of sad to see things go that way, especially because obviously Jackie did care for her. It's just a complicated situation because even for him, it was the whole thing of like you claim that you don't want that you don't want all this, but it is, it is what you want. It's actually what you need. The whole thing of the white picket fence, kind of the fluffy dog, the chubby kid type, the type of situation, kind of like almost like that American dream. That it isn't just like, oh, let's have this fun and stuff like that. You want more, but you pretend like you don't. And it's just not being on the same page. And it's like, I'm curious to see what happens. Because obviously Jackie and her were investigating this whole Charlie situation anyway. Jet kind of pushed him in a certain direction. So I'm wondering, will he kind of lash out at her about this, even though this wasn't her fault? This is all Josie's fault, which... You know, now I'm sure Jet might actually regret all the kind of wisecracks she had about Josie, potentially. It's probably going to be gruesome in the next episode when we kind of pick up with this. It's interesting because we didn't even pick up with the uh, Benny, uh, Benny situation at all this episode. So, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where that ends up ultimately taking us. Oh, there's also another thing I want to talk about, too, that I thought was kind of a nice and kind of sad moment. Was, obviously, Jet and the whole Rufus situation. It's like, oh, she's seeing him. And it's like, oh, you know, what do you expect me to kind of run over there and jump in your lap? It's like, why, you wouldn't? The fact of the matter is, she's like, if you were here, what would you say to me? And it's like, people make mistakes. Kind of trying to ease her mind. It's like, oh, I'd say that just to kind of ease your mind about the whole, like, Vesic situation and my death. And she's like, I can't imagine you saying that. It's like, well, what can you imagine? And it's her imagining the vacation. Well, the kind of time they spent together when they were doing the Vesic job and just him beside her in bed and, to, you know, cutting off the lights and him slowly fading away. It's just kind of... I think for her, it's kind of like a, oh yeah, I'm expected to see you just because it's like, you know, you're someone I cared about and you, your, your death is still fairly fresh to me. So of course I'm going to, I'm going to see you different places everywhere, you know? So like I said, kind of a bit of a downer to end its own form, but like I said, it's kind of a downer of an episode, especially just the way a lot of the stuff plays out. So I'm very interested to see where all this ultimately ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Really quickly, I should also note this, too. The way Maria was talking about, like, because, you know, Phoenix asked, it's like, oh, is your dad dead? It's like, oh, yeah, he died. How? Was it sudden? It's like, oh, yeah, sudden. Even he didn't, wasn't expecting. And I'm like, I was like, is that supposed to reference the fact is you killed him? I was kind of thinking that just because of, like, oh, him being violent and stuff like that. But I was like, maybe she wasn't insinuating that. I assumed that was kind of an insinuation. I'm kind of like, oh, I killed him. Or maybe someone else killed him. The way she was just kind of like, it's so sudden. It could be sick, but it's just like... I feel like you wouldn't phrase it like that if it were something else. Like, the fact that someone killed him, had a must, had a must? I don't know why I said that, jeez. I am delirious. Uh, freaking recording in the morning kicks my ass all the time. Uh, nevertheless, I'm gonna shut my damn mouth. Uh, that was just, that was just where my mind was on that. I just felt like quickly adding that in there, too.
But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.